I used to do a lot of my drawing practice, drawing other people's faces. I remember at the time being kind of shy and not being brave enough to like put myself out as someone who liked to draw. So then I, I copy portraits that were like on the walls of my house or in the, um, in the uh, albums of, with photographs and I will copy them. But I always like faces. That was my favorite thing to do. I use my face a lot. I will go inside the, my bathroom and I will close the door because again, I was still shy of showing my interest because at that time I was drawing people from my family. So they were very familiar to me. But then when I was in middle school, one of our first exercises was to draw the person who was sitting next to us and that there was a girl, she must have been 12 years old. I was about 11. I remember not being one of them, you know, I'm not being one of the, of the ones that, that everybody wanted to be friends with. And this girl wasn't either. And by me looking at her and looking with the eyes of just what I see and I put it on the paper um, became an exercise of, of, of observation. I didn't have that much conscious about like, I'm gonna connect with her or anything. I was just trying to understand how she looked like. And then I remember that she was absolutely happy because the drawing kind of looked like her. When you are being seen by someone else, and especially if they, that person is drawing you, then because they have to look at you carefully, I don't know, the act just becomes, um, it's, like, it's like I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I think it's kind of like this, when you draw someone, it's kind of like you, you're really seeing them, and when they see the picture, they're so excited, or, or they feel so something, because it's like, oh, you see me. And I don't really remember drawing myself when I was younger. Um, I remember very vividly ripping out ads from magazines and copying them and like always these like beautiful women with like <laughs> really long eyelashes, you know, and like, and just copying and copying them over and over again and always kind of looking at them like, oh, they are so beautiful. And like having this idea of beauty being a very, um, you know, a very, like unattainable as a woman <laughs> and also very unattainable as a as an as uh, as someone Asian or somebody of a minority race you know like because it was always a very very beautiful white woman that I was drawing over and over again and idealizing um, and it wasn't honestly it wasn't until college that I started drawing characters that were Asian uh, and I started actually drawing like my parents and my sisters you know and even really myself I think um, to get into the I went to the Rhode Island School of Design like okay and uh, to get in we had to I think we had to do a self-portrait and I think that was probably one of the first times I ever actually drew myself and I remember feeling really uncomfortable and like and I remember even thinking well it's supposed to be, it's, it doesn't have to be, like, I don't have to be pretty. <laughs> I just have to make a good picture. And like, but like, I never considered myself like attractive because it was not a, it was not what I thought what beauty was at that point. So that means like all my whole childhood and up in even those teenage years, I had an idea of what beauty was that that was influenced by all the visions and, and art around me that um, was really harmful. And I can't, and really harmful to me, to the fact that I never drew an Asian person until I went to college. And I can't, I imagine it's extremely harmful to everybody, uh, to all the kids who experience the same thing. Yeah, no, I would totally agree with what Grace had said. Um, I think when I think about any self-portraits I had done at that point, they were only, uh, if like I was required to draw myself was the only time I would actually like try to draw myself. And um, I had this had this idea, and I think sometimes young artists, at least at my, in my time, I had this idea of, oh, this is what good art is supposed to like look like or be. And because like the good art didn't have people that like looked like me. I just like assumed and like, oh, well, like, that you're not like people like you. That's not the sort of art you should be like drawing. 
And it was also for me coming into like, I think around like my senior year and in that first year of college and just realizing that um, I actually had this really interesting um, experience my first year of college at this like apparel um, critique where um, they were looking at the artwork um, that these apparel kids were making. And there was this one girl who came in and she had like these cr this crazy outfits for her uh, models. And I was like, oh my goodness, they're gonna like, they're gonna not like this. Like, it's ridiculous. What's this artwork? And what's this, um, these clothes that she had made? And um, they actually took really well to it. And they were like, oh yeah, no, we totally understand that you're really into costume design. We can totally tell by like what you yourself are wearing. And I just thought that was like kind of a moment where I was just like, oh, like I thought I started to think about the connection between myself and my artwork. And I was looking at my artwork in this time and I'm like, where am I in this? You know, like why these images? Like, why would I be drawing this? This isn't what I know, you know? And then I started thinking about like my godmother's home and like the clothes that my mom likes to wear and like, artists that like are prevalent in my community that like I knew so much about, but like I just kind of put them in the back of my mind and just didn't really like reflect those in my actual artwork. And I think there's something really powerful about being an artist, you know, where you have the ability to put images or put people that you admire or things that you think are important in the spotlight you know that's the great thing about being an illustrator where we get to bring light to those sort of things and I started to more so think more deeply about well what am I giving spotlight to what am I giving light to and I want it to be things that were deeply important to me and I realized up to that point I hadn't before and, you know, I went through a very similar thing when I was at, in art school. Like, um, I, I talk about this uh, quite a bit in some of my talks about how I went to Rome, Italy. And while I was in Rome, Italy and like drawing all these, uh, like copying the greats and drawing the Roman landscape, you know, and learning all these things. And then realizing that I myself was never in my artwork, you know. Uh, well, I met an Italian man and he said, okay, so you, your parents are from Taiwan and they came to the United States. Why, why did they come to the United States? And I realized at that moment, I did not know the answer and that I knew all these obscure things about Roman history. Like I could tell him, you know, how long it took for the, for the Sistine Chapel to be painted, right? But I couldn't tell him why my own parents immigrated to the United States. And it was like that kind of revelation that I was not in my own art, that I did not even know myself. The idea of like, you know, an artist being somebody who has a vision or a message or something they wanna share with the world. And then realizing that I was not being an artist sharing anything with the world because I had never even looked at myself. And that was what was like transformative for me as an artist. You know, it makes me think about like what you are mentioning right now, Grace. We, this ability that we have or, or we don't have sometimes of seeing ourselves with, with love, with admiration, with reverence, with curiosity before we can transfer all of that to seeing someone else. If we have not been able to practice it with ourselves, how can we then... Um, offer it to someone else when we see them. And I, you both um, grew up in the United States, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So I grew up here in Mexico and I, in, here in Mexico, of course we have racism, races like racism like everywhere else. But one of the things that is very, that, that is particular about Mexico is that um, racism is something that we hardly have against others. Is something that we have up, up, up about ourselves. Um, we were taught when, when, when we were colonized that if you were Mexican, if you belong here, um, you were of less worth, of less beauty, of less intelligence and everything. And we have carried that forever. So I, it makes me realize how difficult it is for us to be 
gentle, kind uh, admirer and everything of ourselves. And how hard it is when you don't have that practice, you haven't practiced it with yourself, you cannot put it out there either. So for me, it has been a journey of learning to look at myself and honor like things like the way I look, um, especially when they don't fit the images that we have been always provided about what beauty is, about what intelligence is, about what uh, being of certain worth looks like. A, a lot of kids when, when they are in the United States, but especially those that come from Latino families, they are also having that battle. They are also trying to figure out how to feel uh, proud of the way that they look. Does that happen to to you too? Like, have you seen that in your communities? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was at a school and I was doing a collage workshop. Like I have like my first grade image of me. I drew myself. And so I had the kids draw themselves. I was working with the kids and going around and seeing how they were working with stuff. And I get to a little black girl and she's like drawing. Well, she's not drawing actually. There's like nothing there. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, what's going on? Like, how, how are you doing? And she was just like, uh, I was like, she was like, I hate my ears. I hate my hair. I'm ugly. I don't want to draw myself. And she was just having like such a hard like time, you know, I'm just really stressed out by this idea that she had to depict herself. And like, I was just telling her, I was like, your hair's like my hair. It's beautiful. And you're great. Like your skin and everything's like mine. And she was just like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it was kind of like, you know, like your parents are always will tell you like, oh, you're beautiful, blah, 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 blah. But when you're like a kid, you like, you don't really like believe them. You're like, oh, you're just saying that, you know, it was like kind of like a real emotional experience, like seeing her like go through that. And also the idea that she was only like in first grade <laughs> and it just kind of like made me think of myself and just how much, how early like kids internalize those images, you know? And then the, I'll say at the other side, there was another kid, he was a little black boy. And he was like, he didn't like want me to see his paper. And I was like, oh, like show me your collage. Like what's going on? I wanna see what you're drawing. And um, he was like, I'm not, I have to start over. Like I, I didn't, I did it wrong. And I was like, no, like, let me, let me see it. And he had drawn, uh, himself he had essentially drawn the little boy from thank you amu with like the little buildings in the back because he was drawing himself in the way through that image and that was just kind of a moment for me and i was like oh it's amazing like keep going and things like that but it just was kind of an amazing, shocking for me where i just kind of remembered how it is how important it is what we do and also how early those messages kind of like seep into your mind, you know, without even realizing it. Like, I think if I was sitting here today, I, I can't think I can remember, oh, if I had any kind of issues from that, that age, but it's, it's there, you know, it's in those images that you're constantly seeing and seeing and it just, it, it, it you carry it with you for a really, really long time without even realizing it. Yeah. And it's so heartbreaking when you hear, when you hear and witness those things, um, you know, when I, I before COVID, <laughs> I used to do a lot of school visits too. And, um, you know, and I would go to a lot of schools that were not very diverse, very like homogeneous uh, and usually not diverse meaning mainly white. And I remember, and very often I would go into the school and there'd be like one Asian girl or one Asian boy and um, their face, just like me coming in, like, hi, I'm the author today, would just like completely light up, you know, and be like, oh, you're the author. And, and they'd be like, like, oh my gosh. And they and they always would come up to me right after, like, I'm I'm Chinese too. <laughs> like as if I like as if I couldn't tell. <laughs> it was, but it was it's always so and like, but those interactions all of a sudden you realize how much that matters to them because it's like, oh, the author that came in that my teachers are making a big deal about, you know, that that is obviously somebody that counts, you know, looks just like me. And oh my gosh, that means, you know, people like me count. And that is something that 
I think I craved so much when I was a child, you know, so, so desperately. And it's such, it's so important, I think, that we try to kind of feed that in the kids today. I'm thinking of the times when people have drawn me and it's always been an act of love. They're like, oh, I love you so much, okay? I, I wanted to draw a picture of you. I don't know how you guys felt when you were uh, uh, doing your portraits. Um, I felt a little nervous. I kind of felt like someone was uh, watching me over my shoulder, <laughs> which I don't think any artist really likes someone to watch them as they draw and you're like, oh, you're making me nervous. What if I mess up? And I think there's also a lot of fear that can come about when you're drawing someone else, you know, and you're like, oh no, what if it doesn't look like them? What if I don't get it perfect? You know? What if I hurt their feelings? <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's about kind of like getting over that hump and, and just kind of putting yourself out there, you know, and, and being comfortable with like, oh, well, maybe, maybe the first, maybe the, the first line I put down is a perfect line, but it doesn't have to be the perfect line. You know, I can just kind of go about and I can learn about this subject matter like as I'm as I'm going about it you know and just getting comfortable putting lines on the page. I'm always like looking to like get a, the simple shapes so you really want to break things down into like circles and squares because you know like, I don't want to get too precious about every single line because those are going to be the things that um, I'm going to be cutting out. I can just kind of go about and I can learn about this subject matter like as I'm as I'm going about it. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> can you put it a little closer? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow. And it's so much in, in your style, okay? Like, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, like I, the first drawing I did was a, more of like a drawing of you. And then I, I kind of just took my, my favorite things like uh, your nose ring. I got like some like, yes. tiny metallic paper <laughs> so it shines. <laughs> but, oh. And then I also was like obsessed with your hair. Lots of like the little like curls and the lips. Yes. <laughs> like hair and a nose ring and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm sorry, was that cut paper or paint? Cut paper. Um, some of it's painted, some of it's like cut paper. So like I had like a sketch underneath it and then like I traced out the bits and then I cut, cut the paper and put it in spots. So it's like half and half. <laughs> I love, oh, wow, I love it. All right, who's next? <laughs> My drawing of Grace, even though I made it with a lot, a lot of love, it doesn't exactly look like grace, right? And, and I think that I, I wanna give myself permission to not have to make it look exactly like grace, but to understand that it is a combination of I, looking at me at the picture of grace and doing with what I have with whatever, my hands, my pencil and everything, all my tools and my whatever skills I might have, something happened on the paper that this, the, um, I'm gonna call it the translation of, of grace, right? Which, which has to do something that grace is, but has so much to do with something I have to give. And I'm gonna show you my drawing. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Aww. I drew with my pencil first, let me see if I can show you. And I tried to copy what I saw, what I, what I, what I was seeing about Grace, like her eyebrows, I was thinking, oh, these are like, like the clouds that are on the face. And then I, I gave you lots of colors for your skin and your hair. I have these pastel crayons and that's how I started painting it. I was remembering about the themes of your books and some of the things that you put out there for the world. And one of the, the, the thoughts that came to me is it was the night, the scenes of the night and the sky. So I decided to give you like a, like a, like a sky night oh, um, so outfit with some stars. And then I was putting these little flowers, just kind of experimenting and a moon above you. Oh, I love it. It's so beautiful, Gigi. Oh.
I feel like everyone should draw or paint or illustrate or draw their friends and, and kind of trying to really understand their personality because you're trying to convey it in the art. It's when I'm doing the painting that things kind of become more alive to me. I start start thinking of her as a really bright and vibrant person and how she's so open and warm and all those kind of characteristics came into my head as I started mixing the colors. So this is what I did. Oh, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my glasses so well. <laughs> I love it. Do you I paint it with? Myself. So I paint it with gouache and I know it's, I didn't quite get your chin right. So like, <laughs> It's great. I love it. <laughs> so it's gouache, which is um like a uh, thicker water, thick oh. watercolor kind of thing. Oh, opaque okay, watercolor. So I, I also love the 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 outside, the marks. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I I always live for like the like the I, I love how the, the vignette you've made around. <laughs> so yeah. So well, what I really enjoyed was really like getting your hair like and doing the, the like the way it fell on the on the shirt and everything like that that was really really fun and something that I you know since I, I actually mainly illustrate Asian <laughs> the Asian people <laughs> and Asian characters so it was like really uh what was illuminating to me was how different like your hair falls on on your clothes like versus like when I paint my hair falling on my clothes. It's a much different kind of like feel. So that was like really illuminating to me. So, it looks so amazing. <laughs> I was really nervous showing it to you. <laughs> I realized that too, that it, it, made, it made me nervous to like, because you don't want, um, you don't want to be seen as someone who, who doesn't do it right. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. Is that how you feel? Yeah. 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 I think so. It'd be, it's an interesting thing. Like when we ask kids to draw someone, like how do we alleviate that worry? Because if we feel it, you know, then they must really, maybe it's the idea that they draw something and, and they don't have to show it to the person. Like maybe it's the idea of like take somebody from, from, TV. though I, I don't know I don't even know if that's really the right thing to do either because I feel like so much of it is like seeing a friend you know like 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 I was saying when you draw somebody that you know there's such a love that you feel when you do that so I would also hate for them to just choose like a anonymous person <laughs> you know that they have no connection to and 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 just draw that because they're scared to share it so maybe it's just more embracing the fact that there will always be fear when you create art, but it's embracing, embracing that fear and and having the courage to go forth, you know? And just because you draw someone that you know doesn't mean that you have to uh, show it to them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can just draw, because you know, like I, I think about my, my own sketchbook and it, it's kind of like a diary, you know? Like there's parts where I write my thoughts and then I'll, I'll draw my, my little secret personal drawings of people or things that I'll see around. And like, I think the thing of, even with like the painting I made of Jujuji, like, I mean, I knew I enjoyed doing it and I liked it, but I didn't know <laughs> Jujuji was gonna like it. Well, so I, like, uh, if you could make, a, <laughs> but if you could make an, an illustration of his drawings you really like, like, like you don't, you, you can maybe when you're ready share share them with someone else, but you don't have to. Like a lot of the kids that I, I go to, um, they believe that they don't like to draw. Mm -hmm. A lot of them just just don't feel like they compare themselves or, or they have been discouraged in their attempts. And it makes me remember how fragile it is. Um, creation creating and and we as artists I, I know that i know that when i'm just starting to do something um i i will feel so weak about it i will feel like i'm not good enough i'm not uh uh capable enough that my drawings look awful and um, there are stages of our work 
that feels so fragile that we don't even want to show them anybody because any gesture of disapproval might just break us and feel like, okay, I am stopping here. And I know that happens to children as well. That's why most adults don't continue drawing because at some point they were made believe that even if they're I mean that the drawing, if it didn't, if it didn't look like my Michelangelo or something like that, then it it wasn't worth it. And thinking about how um, children who are just being exposed to the idea of looking with different eyes, looking with open eyes at what they can draw, they might feel um, overwhelmed by by the task. And they are probably gonna draw what they have always seen. Mm. So it makes me wonder, it's not like I have an, an answer, so I kind of put it there. Like it makes me wonder, how do we do that? How do we give a child that we have just met an open experience of the world, of what they can uh, draw? What got me into drawing or art was stories and just really liking stories and seeing the pictures and things like that and then wanting to do that for myself like oh I want to kind of draw my own stories and so thinking about what stories are whatever it's if it's movies or tv or what books like your kid is reading or is being exposed to that can inspire them to make their own work really exposing your kid to just a whole variety of books and stories and tales and things that can really engage them I, I think is really great because I think something that I've noticed a lot when I talk to a lot of other illustrators or authors is oh I'm drawing these I'm drawing these images or I'm writing these words because I never um, I didn't see myself in picture books or I didn't see myself but you know as as you know we're part of this this field and look, uh, look back at history, those books and those stories, they were there. A lot of those stories, like there were stories like that were there. But the thing is, it's not enough just that those stories were there, but how are we connecting those stories to kids? And did kids have access to those stories and, and making sure that there's that connection there? The books are not enough, you know, and the truth is, uh, you know, there's this new this this wave ever since we need diverse books came out you know like we need diverse books and we do need diverse books no no question about it right and we've needed diverse books for a long time uh but the truth is we've had diverse books and these books are just tools and they're wonderful tools but they're completely useless unless we use them and so the important thing is to use these tools to share with your kid as many like many different kinds of books as possible and not just you know not just um books though of course we're all like book lovers <laughs> but like you know even as much as like watching the tv the, the tv programs i do like like are they only watching programs that that have characters of that don't have any characters of color like maybe encourage them to watch something else you know to add to their repertoire you know like try to think of it as like trying to give them uh, a media diet that is very very diverse you know like they all talk about like when you eat your food your fit your food your plate should be colorful like that's the healthiest thing well that goes the same thing with the media that they ingest in terms of visual and reading and all those things it should be as colorful as possible like looking for the diversity in everything that you do. And then doing it in a way that sometimes might feel risky, which is that you look at others with the eyes of admiration, of curiosity. We, we haven't been taught to do that. Even when we ask questions, most of the time we, we know the answers, right? Uh, we hardly know how to ask questions, even us as adults that really, um, are open to the answer that the other one is going to give. So how can we draw, paint, or children, we, how can we transmit that, that their experience is open to um, receive all kinds of answers, all kinds of features, colors, energies, everything. I, I will believe that's a life um, learning. Uh, 
But at the same time, I think that we have to start somewhere. You know, how do we cultivate this and how it's a lifelong process? And I really do think it's a lifelong process of, of letting a child feel validated. You know, like they need to feel validated. They need to feel like they are important enough, you know, like in, in, in the sense, not in the sense of an ego, but like that they can do these kind of things. Um, and that's really a life, a life thing that like parents are always struggling with, I think. But, but at the same time, as outsiders, as, you know, teachers, as friends, as, as authors just coming into the classroom, yet we cannot give that to them, but maybe we can give them a taste of that because I think it's true. I think that kind of validation um, is something they need to keep building and building in their whole life. But hopefully we can give them a little of that and hopefully they can get a little of that through the art process. And I think the thing that we have to emphasize during the art process is the idea of um, what Oge was saying about it's okay to feel vulnerable. Creating art is always going to be an act of vulnerability and it's always going to be an act of courage. And the idea being like, it's okay. It doesn't matter what it looks like. What matters is that you did it. And that's the courageous, brave thing to do. And I think that is what we should emphasize as caregivers, as people who are encouraging uh, encouraging kids to, to create. It's more the encouragement of the bravery of doing the act than the actual thing. And I think if we keep doing that, that is something that can hopefully, hopefully help build, like add the coins into that self-esteem that we're all trying to build in kids these days. Well, it makes me think about then how important it is to create a place where first it is okay to be vulnerable. And maybe if we are capable of drawing someone that something that honors ourselves, but it also honors others, we have to live a life that teaches us how to do that. Even when we are not drawing, even when we are not creating. So when we come to the desk and we take our piece of paper and start creating, which is a process in which we we actually uh, um, can look at our own feelings, our own emotions, our own thoughts, and process them and make something else. Uh, uh, that that time kind of takes from everything that we've been doing around it and just brings it all together and makes us create something, but probably out of the blue and just by drawing is not necessarily gonna stick. It's um, in order to, to be powerful and, and, and have something that really fits our soul and even our own identity and the way that we see others is going to have to be surrounded by many other things. Like you were saying, Grace, like at school, then we are going to have to look at math problems with a different lens. We are going to see the food that we bring to the table, not as something that only came from the market, but something that a person, a real person had to grow and pick and uh, uh, transport and, and eventually bring it here to where we are eating. So it's going to have to be a wholesome experience. And then so that then drawing doesn't become only the act of taking a pencil or something and making lines. Then it becomes a way of processing everything that we are feeling and living at the moment. Uh, yeah, that's so beautiful. I completely agree. I think like what we were saying, how the books are just a tool. I think you really pointed out how how creating art is just a tool as well to make make sense of all this stuff around us. <laughs> and I think something that I really admire about kids and I'm just eternally fascinated by is just how good they are at that. Like kids are just so observational and they just they they see so many things and you know like even when it's like on the topic of like books you know our picture books that we all make like like I'll go into a school or something like that and a kid will ask a question about an image and I'll be like how did you even notice that like they'd see all those tiny details they just are really good at reading images and just really being observational you know and I think the 
I, I think when I think about my experience as a kid, it's like I was always a people watcher. I always loved looking at people. Like, how do I get what I'm seeing like on that page it was something that was always kind of difficult for me. And I think it's for every artist to this day. I think something you get better at is the, the more and more you draw and like uh, you get, the, it's like an instrument where you, you, that practice, you get better at translating that, but it's not just like what makes your work magical or what makes you magical isn't what's on that page. It's the fact that you're seeing that beauty, you know, like it, you know, it's, that's creativity. It's just seeing the beauty that's all around you. And kids are just so observational and just very cognizant of that. And so I think if their like parents are thinking about like with their kids, like I, one thing I always try to get kids out of is like, you know, like when uh, kids like, first kind of learning to draw like they get so precious and they're like doing these like little feathery lines like maybe you start them without even thinking about they have to draw someone at all just get them in the process of making marks and scribbling and just really having a lot of fun on the page but putting something on the page both of both of me and my husband are pretty creative we're always kind of making things one of the things that my husband and I foster in my daughter is I think that we really kind of foster an atmosphere of creativity like we just always have materials available and like so there's always art supplies anywhere like on any shelf anywhere so art supplies and books are always available so she sees us making things all the time so she's she's like oh I'll make something too and I also think this kind of touches on what we were talking about in terms of vulnerability like if you draw something you're like oh I'm a little scared to show it show it because of this but I'm really proud of, of doing this and it made me feel so good doing it, you know, like, and I feel so connected to, um, to the person that I was painting uh, because of that. That's, those are the things that they will get because, because you've done it with them or like in parallel, like I think those are the things that I would encourage parents and caregivers to do. Um, and if they, if, or at least to bring in artists <laughs> into the room, in the classroom who shows how much they love it. And then they can, and then students will see that and they can emulate that and they can model, they, like it's modeled for them. I think modeling is something that is so important that um, we haven't really given as much weight to in the past, you know, um, that, that we thought our words were enough, like, good job, you know, uh, you love that, I love that, you know, and not that they're not important, words are very important, but I think modeling and actions count so much more. I think there's just something really flattering and touching about someone taking the time to try to see you, you know, like, mm -hmm. we look and we look at people all the time, but someone really like sat down and was looking at you in particular and was thinking about like Grace was talking about how my hair rests on my dress and like the patterns on that and really, really conscious of you. There's like, it's just a very intimate connection between you and the things that you draw and someone drawing you and, 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 and seeing that back, you know? Yeah, yeah, I can tell also that I feel, right now I, 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 I'm still enjoying that feeling of being seen because it feels like I've been loved. For those, that time that you took to make my portrait to look at me and try to, and with your work, with that precious things that is your work, you, you did something about me. It's like, who, who has done that for me before? Very few people, you know, because it's an act of love that very few people give. I think not, not, not for other reasons, not because of lack of love, but sometimes because we, we don't feel um, courageous enough to do it in that way. There are many ways of loving and that's one of them. Uh, you know, like most recently I've been, I've been studying and, 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 and learning from other people about how we interpret love and we usually tend to give our love to the people that is close to us, maybe our family or our partners, the people that we choose. And to that, to that people, we give them respect, we give them time, we give them uh, care, but we usually don't do that for other people that is not the ones that we have close. 
if we just met someone it seems like we we we, we think before we give them all of those things um and i don't know why <laughs> You know, we, we haven't been taught to give all of that to people that we don't know yet. It seems like we it is exclusive. We only have it there for my mom, my child, or my partner. But what happens when we have someone else who is just as beautiful, worthy, alive, and everything is just another person? Are we capable of giving that other person the same love, the same things, the same respect, the same the quality of treatment and all those things that they don't have to earn it because they already are, are, are they are worth of that, of receiving that from every one of us. So in this moment, I, when I see the drawing that you made, Augie, um, I just felt like, you love me for that time and I'm really grateful for it. I'm just delighted. I I love what you said, like how how you don't have to earn it. And like and and that when you want to give that love. And like I, I feel like like I've only met Oge like two or three times, you know, but after painting that picture of her, I feel like so connected. <laughs> I almost feel like like I feel like, oh, it's like she's my best friend now. <laughs> like, because because I've like painted and thought like and I've thought of you like while I'm here, you know, like all these things. And I think when when you showed the portrait you did of me, Gigi, it's just so touching and so like it just feels so amazing to think like someone was thinking of me. And not just like the way I look, but like all the aspects of the things that make me me and how, and, and that is such a gift. And that is probably what, so for me as, a, as an artist, for me, for my, for my history, for all the things, that's so much of what I've been striving for in, in the work that I do, the work that I, that, that I do and, and who I am is so like always striving to be seen and be worthy just because of who you are, you know? And so seeing that really makes you feel, made me feel like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's what I've been looking for, you know? And so I think that is the gift that you get um, when people draw you. Wow. I, you know, what it makes me wonder like right now how we are in these COVID times and we cannot hug each other, we cannot touch each other, how these, could be a way of showing our connection and our love and our curiosity um, until we can again uh, hug and do other things. Uh, I, I think this could be a really awesome way of, <laughs> of, of saying hi and saying I'm here for you. Yeah. When I think about uh, why I am an artist or why I love art is I just, I love people, you know? Like I love drawing, I, I love drawing people because I love people, you know? And I love meeting new people and seeing what they're wearing, seeing how they express themselves and mm -hmm. um, seeing kind of that light that they have inside them and trying to capture that, that capture that likeness in an image, you know? And I just think that is that that love of people and that love of people different from me and that love of learning about people, especially people who are different from me is what really motivates a lot of my artwork. You know, it's like the artwork, it's, it's a celebration, you know? Yeah. 